What is boudoir photography? Have you heard about boudoir photography, but you're not really sure what it is, but everyone seems to be doing it? Well, whether you are a photographer or you are looking for a photographer, this video is for you because I'm going to break down exactly what to expect in the world of boudoir. It's showtime. Hello, I'm Mike Lloyd. I run a multi six figure boudoir studio in Silicon Valley, California, and I love boudoir. Now, when I got started in photography 12 years ago, I wanted to shoot commercial fashion. I wanted to be as creative as I could possibly be, shoot all these crazy things, and just explore what I could do as an artist. And I did not consider at the time that I could take those same concepts and shoot families and seniors and teens and couples and then boudoir with the same principles, which is why my style is different from most other photographers in my genre. And I, I mean that the, the boudoir world. That's because also our genre has grown so much in the last five years that the, the term boudoir can now mean many things. And I'm going to go over what is traditional boudoir, what is non-traditional boudoir, and then what is not boudoir, because I think that's really important to clarify also. So firstly, what is traditional boudoir? There's two things that we can chat about, artistic style and then the purpose of the session. Now, we all remember those 80s and 90s glamour shots with the soft focus, the feather boas, sparkles in the background, right? You would go to a studio and they would take these cheese ball photos, but they were glamorous at the time. And then you would get these images to take home with you. But because of the very, very small barrier to entry in the photography world now, meaning anyone can go to the store and buy a camera, so many people have got to add their creative touch. And that style of photography merged into what I consider traditional boudoir. And that is tasteful, artistic photos of women generally done in lingerie or some sort of provocative attire. Could be nightgown, could be whatever, but it's more sexualized, more seductive, generally playful, sometimes serious. But boudoir, which is a French term for bedroom, you know, that's that's the basis of this style of, of photography is allowing women to comfortably display the sexy side of themselves. And I think that's great. You get the same shots of, you know, laying down on the bed with the knees up and the arms back behind the shoulders or biting the pearl necklace or my favorite, hooking the high heel in the back of the G-string. And by favorite, I mean least favorite. It is so cheese ball. <laughs> Again, my opinion, that is traditional boudoir photography. A ton of photographers still shoot that. A lot of photographers do, and that's great because a lot of people still want that style of photography, which leads me into my next point, non-traditional boudoir. Now, not everybody wants that same style, but they still want to get the same sort of empowering effect. And empowering, empowerment, empower, these are words we hear in the boudoir space a lot these days because it goes so much farther beyond just showing the sexy side of yourself or of your client. And this is how I define it with my own clients and my own brand message. You are dropping your armor and whether that's your clothing or your figurative guard when you walk into my studio, because we do shoots where everyone's fully clothed the whole time. It's not about wardrobe. It's about being vulnerable in front of a camera. It's about doing something scary. It's about creating your own new comfort zone, not stepping outside your comfort zone, but creating a new comfort zone. And I believe this is really what boudoir has evolved into and where this industry is going at a million miles an hour. And I'm so excited for it because again, it's not about the wardrobe. If you don't want to take lingerie photos, great. Don't. If you want to shoot in dresses, jeans, and a t-shirt in whatever, great. Do it. If you want to go fully nude, awesome. Do it. It's, it's less about being sexually provocative and more about just owning your space and saying, this is who I am. I'm not going to hide anything. I'm not going to cover anything or I'm going to cover it strategically, but I'm going to be comfortable with myself. This is who I am. And I think that's amazing. Yes, that's it. So with non-traditional boudoir, you're going to find more 
fashion influence, more fine art influence. You're going to get these other styles of photography blending into what was the traditional space, which is why all of my work, my lighting style, for example, chiaroscuro, Caravaggio was this Italian painter. Everything was very dark and moody. People are lit by candlelight. They were all nighttime scenes. That's where I got my style of lighting from. I also love old Hollywood film noir style setups. I love that lighting. And so again, that's how I model my own work. So I get to take those things, mix them into boudoir, and then I'm going to take all of my posing that I learned in the fashion world and bring that in. Now I have this hodgepodge of old school style lighting with very modern style fashion posing to empower my clients to feel good about themselves. Now, this is a conversation I've had with a ton of photographers online and in person. And I think because art is so subjective, it is difficult to really define what art is to any given person. There's no general definition of what something is or what there is not. I know back in, I want to say it was the 70s when Congress was trying to ban pornography in America. And somebody asked the the senator, how do you define pornography? And he said, well, I can't define it, but I know when I see it. However you feel about porn, different conversation. But that statement is what is happening in the boudoir space right now. Some people say like that is basically pornography and others are saying, no, that's just artistic expression. It's a spectrum. There is no black and white of what is and what isn't. And I believe it's up to every photographer and every client to define their own boundaries, their own standards, what they are looking for and what they are not looking for when it comes to choosing the right photographer. Some photographers shoot more erotic work. It's very suggestive, very evocative. Others shoot more conservative. It's more light and airy. It's flowy. It's like they would use these photos. I'm imagining like spring fresh laundry detergent is sort of the mood and feel you would get from some. Some is dark and moody. Every artist is different. So I don't know that I can give you a real definition of what it is and what it is not. That is entirely up to you. Maybe not where you thought I was going to go with this, but that's it. We can't define it. We can't define what it's not. It's up to every single photographer. I personally do not shoot anything overly sexualized. I don't show certain body parts in my photography, and that's a personal preference because for me, I think there's so much more power and emotion in an image where you're hiding things, where there's mystery, where it's not just splayed open for everyone to just view right there. That does nothing for me as a creative, and I don't believe that that empowers my clients the way that I want to work with them. Other photographers feel differently, and there are clients for them, and that's the beauty of this whole thing. Find an artist or client that has the same vision that you do, and you will be fine. But it's good to ask those kinds of questions, and it's something to look for when you're looking at someone's portfolio or presenting your own portfolio if you're a photographer. Figure out what sort of message do you want to send with your images, what story are you telling, or how do you want your story told in these photos if you are looking for a photographer. And that is how you will define what is and what is not boudoir photography. It is entirely up to you. Just be safe. Please vet your clients and your photographers to make sure you're all on the same page. Be clear about communication. Do not assume anything. Do not surprise anyone with last minute requests. If you show up at a photo shoot and you're like, oh, by the way, I decided I want to do this whole thing nude and your photographer is not comfortable with nude work, that presents complications. Same thing if you're a photographer and you decide that you want to shoot certain things and you haven't gone over that with your clients ahead of time, not cool. So just be clear with your intentions, with what you are presenting, with what you are looking for. Make sure everyone's on the same page and that is the best way to make sure everyone walks away happy. So there you go. That's the evolution of boudoir photography from what it used to be, you know, in the glamour shot days to what we have now, which combines multiple genres and then how to tell if somebody else's definition of boudoir matches matches your own because there is no one definition of boudoir photography. Now, if you want to learn more about how to shoot boudoir photography in any style of lighting, of posing, of storytelling, head to boudoirguild.com and you can find the membership site there. I've also got some other videos on this channel to help you build your business. A ton of them about marketing, about how to set your pricing, 
everything that you could need to make money with your camera. And if you're looking to book a shoot for yourself, my website is mikeloydboudoir.com. I would love to have a conversation with you and help tell your story. So you are amazing. I'll see you inside. 